So whenever it comes to rotating the view, my favorite way to rotate the view at the time is using the middle mouse button, which will just let you rotate the view. However, there's always been alternatives in Blender. For example, if we press F4 and we bring up our preferences, under input, there's an option for emulate three button mouse. And whenever you have this enabled, you can hold Alt and just click and drag and it will allow you to rotate your view. And whenever you're inside of modals, we now support the ability for users to be able to use Alt and left mouse button in order to rotate their view inside of a modal without it exiting the modal or anything, which was what it was doing previously. Me personally, I'm a big fan of actually sticking with this being off. So I'll just bring my preferences up and just turn that back off. But just letting you know that if you use emulate three button mouse, we will support it. However, it will affect your ability to use things like alt inside of the multi options inside of hard ops. So that's something to keep in mind. In fact, uh, to go a little bit more over uh, emulate, emulate um, left mouse button with blender and hard ops, if we jump over to sculpt mode, uh, there's also an option in the Q menu uh, under Sculpt for turning on Emulate 3 button mouse because sometimes you just want it on the fly whenever you're using Sculpt with a pen and then you just quickly want to be able to turn it off. So just letting you know that it also exists there as well just for those cases in which you do need it just on the fly. So we have been experimenting with it as a toggle, but as of this update, we now support the ability for users to support and use uh, Alt plus left mouse button in the middle of a modal operation. So with this scene, let's take a moment to click on the floor, press H to hide, and I'm going to shift click the uh, eyeball over here in the outliner to hide everything uh, that's a child of this empty. And we're also going to shift click this to hide the camera and its adjacent empty. And we can just select this. And if we jump into AccuShape, we can see that AccuShape has received some improvements over the course of these last couple of updates. Uh, the main one being that you can now move this around and place it wherever you need to. But as we continue to improve on AccuShape and it begins to take its true form. Uh, users have also reported some particular issues that come up with it and its accuracy. So while we tried to make it work with the unit system in Blender as accurate as possible, there is some issues still whenever it comes to adjusting the unit scale. So for example, if we just change this to 0 0.01, if you jump into AccuShape, it'll now at least display a dialog window letting you know that there will be some issues with calculating this accuracy whenever you're using that. So for the record, um, as we continue working on it, I would just recommend leaving your unit scale at one for now. However, I do plan to do a video going over AccuScale or AccuShape and the um, scaling purposes of it in a future video. But one of my favorite things to do with it is just press F and, and control click to set my anchor point. And then from here, we can just jump under feet and let's see, we're looking at the height. This thing is currently seven feet tall. So it's quite large compared to a person. We'll type something a little more manageable like 3.5. And we see that the box is scaled down. If we press space bar, everything now has been sized inside of it. So we've also been doing some work to improve the ability to get things to scale inside the volumes a lot better. And there's even alternative systems now. So we'll just delete the lattice that it created and we'll select it again. And let's do the exact same thing. So I'm just gonna press F. We'll set our anchor point to the bottom and we'll set this to be 3.5 again, except this time, instead of using a lattice, we're actually going to change it to an empty. So if we look at our help over here, we see that shift E will toggle uh, between lattice and empty. So now we're exiting with an empty. And if we press space bar, now we have the empty actually scaling it down instead of using a lattice, which can be a little bit easier and also help you with certain cases in which a lattice would fail. Sometimes there's limitations to which system will work. So it's just important to be mindful of the result that you're getting and making sure that it's actually scaled down appropriately. And if not, attempt to use some of the alternative system that's also built inside of AccuShape. So Pizza Ops has been a running joke inside of Hard Ops a long time ago. I thought it would be fun to make an operator that would assist users with ordering pizza. And then over time, as we've redone our systems and added image loaders and things like that, I thought it would be nice to basically bring it forward with um, its functionality. So if we press Q and go under settings, we can bring up Pizza Ops in the form that it is now. However, this is probably the most unused button in Hard Ops period compared to everything else every button definitely gets used but pretty much i only use this a couple of times as a gag um, even over the course of adding these images to it i did order some pizzas and needless to say 
too much pizza, guys. So as of now, pressing Q and going under settings, you'll notice that Pizza Ops has been replaced with Link Ops. And if we click on it, it will now bring up a window loader that will allow you to scroll through various images to take you to various areas in the ecosystem. So if you're looking for a particular tutorial or content for hard ops or ways to get started or various channels, there's more than enough options in here to get you started. And on top of that, there's also still the hops button that you can drop down and use the buttons in order to jump to various locations in the event that you're needing assistance with finding your way around. So when it comes to hops and finding out about it, there's no easier way than just clicking on the hops button and choosing the hops about icon and clicking it to quickly get a little about information whenever it comes to hard ops. You can see mine telling me that I need to update. However, if we hover over it, we can see the tooltip offers us a couple of different options. You can shift click it, it'll show you all the add-ons that you currently have installed. Uh, let's hover, hover over it again. We see that we could play Pong if we want, just by going to the about button, you can just play a quick game of Pong, but this isn't a time for fun and games. If we look at control shift, we see that that will allow us to look at tips. And so tips is something that I wanted to put in hops for a while. However, this is just basically the V1 of this concept, and I look forward to what it turns into as time goes on. Um, users reported that they were having issues, a little bit of issue with the speed that these tips take place. So if we just click to get rid of that, we can press Control K to bring up our properties. We've recently did a revamp of our properties where now you can go in and actually adjust various parameters on the fly in your 3D view a little bit more readily than before where they were just a little bit more congested. In this case, we're just looking for the options pertaining to the screensaver fade time. And this time, um, we want the fade time to actually be eight, not 83. And we'll just click to get rid of that. And if we go to the hops button and we control shift click again, we see that now we're able to have these tips show on screen for a lot longer. So I do look forward to what this turns into as time goes on, but I am very proud of the work that's gone into this and I look forward to expanding more on this concept of tips and having tips and screen savers inside of hops to continue to motivate users even when they're idle or just needing a little bit of direction as far as what they can use different tools to do or how to go a different direction or finding their own path, you know? So. For now, they're just tips, but I do look forward to what they turn into as time goes on, and I hope everyone has um, at least given them a try. So you might have noticed when you use the latest box cutter with Blender 2.91 or later that if you perform a box cut and then you tap into edit mode, it actually shows the results of your Boolean from object mode in edit mode. And that's because the modifier panel now has under booleans the ability to display the modifier in edit mode. This was something that we forgot to do on the hard hop side, but thanks to a user reporting it, that has now been rectified. So now if you perform a boolean, you can tap into edit mode and it will actually show you the modifier live in edit mode. And as you see me toggling here, it's something that you can do on pretty much any modifier, but now we have it enabled by default whenever you use booleans inside of hard ops. For this example, we'll select the cube and delete it. And I'm going to press Alt W to switch over to Hops tool. New to this version of Hard Ops version 0986.33, we now have the ability to add a pillow. And adding a pillow will put you on the first frame. And then if you let it play back, you'll get a very nice quick pillow. So here I am in 2.83 where I'm using an older version of Hard Ops. And if you press Control K, you can bring up the preferences. And the first tab, the UI of our press, was something that I felt we could clean up a bit. And it's been pretty clean and is my favorite tab of our preferences at this time. However, if we jump over to properties, we see that properties was getting a little bit out of control. And if we jump over to color, color was especially getting out of control, especially if you're trying to adjust these things on the fly in your 3D view. It's kind of a lot of things to be looking at and it's poorly organized. And this has been pointed out by users and was something on our to-do list. So this is something that we wanted to resolve and improve. So if we bring up the next version of Blender, here we are in just regular uh, 2.92 using underscore 33. If we press Control K, 
we can bring up our preferences, which on the UI tab look pretty much the same, which is our goal. But if we jump over to our properties, we now see that our properties have been cleaned up and consolidated to take up a lot less space so users can quickly find the options that they need and it's just visually a lot better. In fact, if we open Mark and Sharpen, we see that things just look a lot better. In fact, I pretty much pointed at Machine and was like, hey, just make our prefs look like Machine's prefs because he has a pretty good thing going on. So. I'm proud to announce that our prefs have been cleaned up and now you should be able to just quickly get in and find the options that you need and configure things exactly as you need to, even though there's really no need to get in and adjust these things um, unless you're really particular. But just letting you know that we are still working on improving even the areas of hops that are just swept under the rug like our preferences. We want our preferences to be as accessible to users as possible. So bull shifting is the workflow of just performing a cut and then shifting it to something else. In fact, you can bring down the hops button and just click on buttons to just change it between all the various types of cutters. In fact, this is what we've been working to improve inside of hard ops is this ability for users to just quickly click these buttons randomly and do this. I don't know why people do this, but I get reports that people do this and run into issues whenever they do this. So because of that, we've went in and performed improvements to make sure that this definitely works the way it's supposed to, even though this is not the way people are supposed to be using this system. In fact, if we go back into a previous version of Blender, we're gonna shift D, duplicate this cube, select both of them and perform a difference. And we will just go under our hops button and let's just start jumping through states. And we see that it's just not working. In fact, that was what users would run into. So in a way it's like, you know, what are you doing? But in another way, hey, we fixed that issue. So now this isn't gonna any, no longer be a thing. So whenever it comes to making cloth or pad in hard ops, it's just as easy as us going in edit mode, selecting a face, and we could just control click curve extract to just rip this piece off and then go to mesh tools and control click dice to dice on all axes. And now that this object has been diced, we could just jump into cloth and begin playing with cloth. So now that the UI is movable, we can choose to just play. We can also choose how much shrink is being added, but new to this version is also the gravity parameter where users will now be able to add as much gravity as they need on the fly in case they need their bags to sag or their bags to float. So just letting you know that we are still working on improving even the cloth workflows in hard ops. And this is just a step in that direction. So we hope everybody is still utilizing the uh, cloth tools and giving them a try. So to show curve, which is this one right here, in action, we will take our cube and we'll just press Q and just use a ray V2, press X to change the axis and roll the wheel. In fact, let's change the axis and make it Z. Uh, Z is always my least favorite to deal with. And let's shift A and just add a Bezier circle. And I'm just gonna tap it edit mode and scale up that curve. So I'm gonna select the object, select the curve, and now notice that we can click on this and we can add a curve modifier. We've done some work to also fix the F9, so you can go in and just control scroll over the F9 to ensure that you get the curve to curve just the way you want, which is something I've always wanted inside of Blender. Just letting you know that we've taken some steps towards improving in this regard so that it should be more fluid to users trying to just quickly get things to curve around other things. In closing, I just wanna say that I continue to be the biggest fan of hard ops. I love this tool so much and I cannot be more proud of the immense amount of work that continues to go into it release after release. And while this has been quite an eventful uh, 986 with all sorts of things happening over the course of it, um, we still have much more planned coming up in the future and we can't wait to show you what's going to be the uh, mainstay of this 987 release, but it's already been decided and it's already in the work. So more on that will be coming soon, but I hope that everyone stays tuned and you know, continues to um, get better at hops and gets more acquainted with it because it is in the end just a way to get acquainted with Blender. And so, you know, we aim to just help users with that process, but we don't aim to replace any of the workflows that Blender has built 
if anything, we aim to uh, just help connect them in a unified way to make hard surface a little more accessible because Blender is uh, such a jack of all trades that hard surface just can feel a little bit left out when it comes to identifying all the buttons and things associated with hard surface operations. And so this tool pretty much started from us wanting to consolidate that workflow into an easy to use digestible system. And so as time goes, more and more edge cases come up that complicate things and open new possibilities, but I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. And I'll um, close there before getting sentimental, but I thank everyone for their continued usage of hard ops and of course for watching this video. And with that, I will wrap this up and see you guys next time.